Welcome to Screen Weens, episode 99. We're getting there. Hosted by me, London, and that guy, Thomas. Thomas Griffin. Oh, it's like Peter Griffin from Family Guy. Ah! Whoa, it's like if Peter Griffin and Thomas the Train had a kid. It's like, that's, that was my entire childhood <laughs> right there. I mean, that I grew up comment. with the name London. So. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever call your penis Big Ben when you were a kid? I still do. Nice. There you go. All right. Hey, flaccid Ben. <laughs> okay, Thomas just told me he was about to tell me something fucking epic as soon as we started the podcast. Oh. And that is that he stole the Declaration of Independence. Dude, I wish it was that epic. It's not that epic. I finished season three of The Clone Wars, and it was fucking awesome. I think it was like awful. Yeah. That season, like the first two seasons were like pretty good. Like I enjoyed yeah. them. But season three was the first one that felt like well cooked all the way through where I was like, damn. What were some big arcs in season three? Uh there was the Mortis arc. Uh that one I I was really on the ledge through most of it because I'm like Is that the father, the son, the son? The father, the son, the daughter, and like it gets into the whole like Showing Anakin his future. I which, fucking... I know not everyone loves it. I fucking love that. I, I was really... The, while I was watching it, I was cautious because I'm like, this doesn't work and they're going to have to do something to basically kind of retcon this. Mm -hmm. And then they did. And I was like, okay, I, I could probably enjoy this much more on a second watch. But I did thoroughly enjoy it. I was like, okay... This is an interesting concept that I wasn't expecting. I thought just... that was so early on in the Clone Wars, season yeah. three. I always think of that and be like, oh, that's got to be like the last season Clone Wars stuff. You would think so. But uh, the fucking arc that's like Predators with Adrian Brody, except it's Ahsoka and the fucking Gorn people who aren't Gorn. What are they called in Star Wars? The lizard people? Transdotions? Mm. Those ones? Yeah, the like, one that Bosk is? Basically, like, Ahsoka, yeah, Ahsoka gets, like, taken on the, like, hunting planet where she's hunted down with the other Padawans. Oh, oh fuck. I gotta rewatch season three. I haven't seen a lot of Clone Wars in, like, a long time. Mm. But, yeah, no, that arc was really good. And then I watched the very beginning arc of uh, season four, which is the Water Wars, which I liked. Is that the one with Akbar? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Star Wars news. I finished season two of, the, of Rebels. Mm. Um, rewatching? So yeah, we're rewatching. Oh, okay. um, I, I haven't seen it in like four, probably like five years now. Mm. Um, watching it with Hina Taya. Oh, and nice. we're almost like halfway through season three. It's just so fucking good. It's like literally I think Rebels is one of the best things Star Wars has ever done. Mm. I'm, I'm interested to see it, because I, I hear split things, but everything that I've, like, seen from Rebels, because I've seen, like, little clips and stuff, and I think it all seems pretty good. Like, I, I don't know what the general complaints are, other than the animation not being as pretty, but... And I mean, like, I just think it looks different. I think Rebels has, like, really, really nice, like, shot composition. There's some... Mm. I feel like every episode, there's a really cool, like, really wide shot of something, and all the space stuff looks really, really nice in Rebels. Mm. I, I think, in general, it just takes getting used to, and I think the first season does look kind of rough, but I yeah. feel like the first, like... Three seasons of Clone Wars look a little rough. <laughs> yeah, especially the movie. Yeah, yeah. That yeah, to my understanding, that was even like before they moved into full production with the show. They were just like, "Yeah, this is what we're gonna do with the series." And George Lucas is like, "Let's put it in theaters." And they were like, just like, uh, "Okay," which is so sad because there's so many arcs in Clone Wars that would have been fucking phenomenal movies, right? And it's I I think. Because a big reason why I didn't watch Clone Wars is because I went and I saw that fucking movie in theaters. And I don't, don't want to watch I don't this. mind the movie, but, like, if it was structured just, like, three episodes, I think, or four episodes, I think it would have been fine. Yeah. Um, there are parts I like. I really like the fight between, like, Dooku in that. I think Dooku and Obi-Wan have a fight, and I think Obi-Wan also has a fight with Asajj in that. Yeah. And I like the fights in it, and I like Rod of the Hutt because he's so fucking ugly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but. Yeah, I, to me, it's like, I feel like that would be like the One Piece equivalent if they were to like, hey, we're going to do a canon movie, adapt something from the source material, and it's going to be the Foxy arc. 
It's just like, why would you choose that of all the arcs? Okay. It's the Davy back fuck. Yay. But uh but yeah, no, the fucking it's great. And I yeah, I'm excited to fucking watch through the rest of it and get on to Rebels and then Bad, I'll probably watch Bad Batch before Rebels, because that's where it takes place, right? Yeah, it takes place pretty much right after uh, yeah. the Clone Wars. Technically, like, it starts Currently, during, yeah. like, the last couple, like, the last two episodes of Clone Wars. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I'll probably watch Clone Wars, watch Bad Batch, watch Rebels, watch, uh... I'm probably gonna... Then, because I I started reading the Vader comics, but I'm like, no, I just want to do, like, a big canon in chronological dive, so I'll probably, like, watch after Rebels. I'll read, like, the comics or whatever, wherever they take place, and then watch the movies in between. I hear that the newest Vader comic's not the best, though, but whatever. I'll I'll check it out, see it for myself. The one that's currently running? Mm -hmm. Oh, I've heard it's pretty decent. Uh... At least from the people that I work with and the mm. people that like buy it, but obviously if you're buying it, fourteen or fifteen issues in, you're probably yeah. a bit biased, All right? But, but yeah. have you done anything else this week? No, no. just that. And That's like fair. Work and re- Red Dead Online, where I can squeeze Red in. Red Dead Online. Um, I finished other Star Wars. I finished Jedi Jedi Outcast, the one mm-hmm. I was playing. It's a good game. There's, there's like, uh, it's definitely aged. There are some bad design choices. There's randomly like a like a stealth level, and I'm like, that's dumb. Mm-hmm. Um, and some of the boss fights aren't great, but overall, I think it's a really fun game. Uh, and we watched. We barely watched, like, anything. We watched In the Heights uh, la- last week after you left, after the podcast. We watched In the Heights, and I really enjoyed that. But I, I like musicals, and I like mm. Lin-Manuel Miranda, usually. Oh, yeah. um, and then we rewatched because we're still going through the MCU, we watched Avengers. I fucking hate that movie. I hate the first Avengers movie. Yeah, it's so, it's boring as fuck. <laughs> Yeah, like, I I think it's kind of, eh. I don't really feel strongly one way or the other. I think it's just kind of like a bland, like, probably like what I would give as like the perfect definition of just a five. Just perfectly just like, wow, this is the Which safest. Is somehow worse than a three. It can be. Oh, it can in the Because like there are threes, I would probably like, I'd rather watch like this than this. Dracula 3000. No. Probably would not choose to re- watch that over the Avengers. Maybe I would. I don't know. No, I don't think I would. Anyway, um, I'm trying to think of a three that I would be like, yeah, I'd have to look at my threes and do that real quick. But yeah, the Avengers. I like. I like it better than Avengers two, but I don't like it better than Avengers three or four. Man, that video of us re- reviewing In- Avengers 3, oh, yeah. I watch it every once in a while. I'm like, we look like babies. I'm sure we do. Yeah, yeah I haven't watched that video in a long time. And I'm so skinny in that video. Like, I'm not saying I'm, like, fat or anything, yeah. but I've, I've, like, filled out as a human being. Then I still had, like, mostly, like, my high school body. So I was mm. like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Oh. I'm sure I probably look maybe just marginally thinner. I I maintained. You look sexy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let me see. Let me look at my threes here. What do I got for threes? I never use. I barely use Letterbox anymore. I hardly ever rate anything. If I do, yeah. I just log it. I'm just like. Oh. And then um, we're recording Reed Weems and like. Probably like a week and a half or two weeks. So I've been trying to buckle down and read that. I'm like 250 pages in. Oh, nice. Have you started it? No. <laughs> but you know me. I'll make it. Yeah, I know. But I just, I want to finish it early so I make time to read more Star Wars pretty much. Because I stopped reading Master and Apprentice, the one mm-hmm. with Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan, yeah. so I could focus on that. So that- I'm like, fuck, I want to. Have- I, I don't know if that book does, but does it, do that, is there any, like, expanded material that dives into the, like, uh, 
Duchess of Mandalore stuff with them? I don't think so. Oh, missed opportunities. What well, there's doing? always time. I know. <laughs> um, actually, I don't know. Maybe Master and Apprentice does. I fucking hope so. Was that in season three? Uh, they mention it in season two. Okay, but you haven't like seen a lot of it yet. Uh, I, the only thing I've I've seen like a couple <sighs> Mandalore based like plots, but nothing. Is a uh, red red man around? I don't think so. He's not around yet. You are, are, are you talking about? Yeah, no, yeah, he hasn't popped up. Okay, and I know. Oh, I know, that might be getting a season four. Actually. I know. Spoiler that happens with that because that was one yeah. of the things that I like had seen that I was like, oh, that might make me want to check out the Clone Wars. It's but. literally that character went from, like, he's an episode long. Mm-hmm. He's just like the best. To, I think he's one of the best, char- like, Star Wars characters. I'm really time. interested to see more of him. And I'm also, I wasn't expecting this. This completely fucking blindsided me. But that uh, Savage or whatever his name is, he's fucking great, too. I Savage was- Press, like... Stupid fucking name. Yeah. And when even when I first watched Clone Wars, I'm like, is this going to be dumb? But no, he's he's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. There are a lot of the stuff around, like Dathomir, the Night Sisters, Z- Zabrix, Zabrax, I can't remember how you pronounce it, are like really cool, really good. And I genuinely hate Dooku for betraying Ventress like that. Dooku's is literally like, like a psycho. It's just like, dude, you clearly don't want to do this, but you're just committing. You to gotta it. read Dark Disciple. I, like it's, I probably. It's, it's a really easy read too, and like some of the writing isn't great, but the story in general is so fucking good. Mm. You just basically summed up how I feel about the prequels. <laughs> Later, I love the prequels, I, man. I like the prequels. I, I, I maybe well, this will maybe you're getting into Star Wars now, like with I'm, the books, and you're gonna like, yeah, the prequels. <laughs> See, the way I view the prequels, I love the story of the prequels. I love what they were going for. I just think that George Lucas is really bad at writing dialogue, and sometimes is really bad at just plotting out his story in like an efficient way. I view the prequels as, like, canon, but as told through, like, an unreliable narrator. Like, I don't <laughs> it, know like, zooms I'm... out. It's like Jar Jar just drunk. Ah, Misa! So Misa was ready! Oh, my <laughs> God. Dude. The fucking Gungans versus Grievous. Oh, shit, dude. That rocks The my Gungan world. stuff in Clone Wars is awesome. Yeah. Holy fuck. Like Jar Jar's in uh, one of the aftermath books. Okay, yeah, I'm curious to find out what the fuck happens to Jar Jar because I don't, I don't He's know. Sad. Oh no, he doesn't die. Oh well, that's good. They, do you want to just know? It's not. It's pretty much like you see it in like one chapter. It's like one scene. Shit, sure. I haven't read it yet, but pretty much like. It zooms in on, like, a fountain in, like, a, a city, and he's, like, a juggling clown, and he's, like, making a boy, like, laugh, and he's talking about just, like, yes, we made many mistakes in the past, and he's just, like, really, he's just really depressed because he sees, like, the role he played in everything, even if it was unintentional. Mm. Jar Jar, I really, really like the idea of Jar Jar as a character, and... I, I I love Jar Jar. I like Jar Jar too. I I That's used why to, I put that poster up so I can just look straight at him. I used to not like him. I used to think he was just an annoying cartoon character with some problematic uh, similarities to some yeah you know. But uh, fucking I don't know. Clone Wars has really just helped. Just I don't know. I feel like he works in Clone Wars. I'm like yes, they write him. They don't put him in too much. Whenever he shows up, it's it feels like a nice kind of uplifting, like, oh, it's been a while, like, the series is getting kind of dark. Let's throw some hopeful Jar Jar in here. Has Hondo Onaka shown up yet? Uh, I don't know. The, uh, I, I'm bad with names him, sometimes. He's so. a pirate? His Anakin and Obi-Wan had to team up with Dooku. No. Okay. You'll meet Hondo. Hondo is amazing. Okay. Hondo's incredible. Well, cool. All right. Let's we're just this is as you we get more and more into yeah, Star Wars. Every week it's just gonna <laughs> progress further and further. 
All right, let me see if Pierre sent anything. He's out there, but maybe we're just done. No more questions. Question time is over, apparently. We can <laughs> always look for Eugene. Now, <sighs> ah, let's just jump in today. Okay. Uh, 1969. Going to talk about Funeral Parade of Roses, which is like a, the title's kind of a pun, mm-hmm. apparently. Because like, the the word for rose in Japanese uh, is like similar to the word for like pansy apparently so it's like okay huh. you know parade and that was referring to like gay men or something. so mm. anyway in- and, uh, interesting this movie has been in my in my watch list for a really long time the director I think his name's Toshio Matsumoto mm. um. I've seen, like, six of his short films. I've seen a lot of his short films. He did one called Atman, which is, like, this guy in, like, a demon face mask. He's just sitting in the middle of a field, and it's just 12 minutes of the camera just t- going I remember around. you telling me about that <laughs> one. Yeah. And it's just going, like, slower and faster, and it's, like, really hypnotic after a while. Mm-hmm. And I can see that in this. There's definitely yeah, a couple there's things like, like, like that. subliminal messaging yeah. kind of shit that he does with his editing. Um, so, and I haven't seen, a like, an experimental Japanese movie in a while, and around this time, there were a lot, like, similar. Like, I've seen a really big... A movie that I'm a really big fan of is Brandy the Kill, which I've talked about mm-hmm. on the podcast before. But it was like this Yakuza movie that the director was just like, he was rewriting it all the time. The studio didn't really like it. So he's like, fuck you. I'm going to do it. I'm going to make it crazy. And then he's like, anybody that's on the film, if you want input, we'll put it in the movie. And it was just like really weird. Hmm. The main character gets really horny whenever he smells rice. (laughs) And there's like, it's really funny. It's really fucking experimental. Um, But I love that movie. And... Spoiler alert, I love this movie. I uh, also really like this okay, one. Okay, good. I'm I glad thought, I was like, I thought there was, there are some movies and I'm like, okay, Thomas, it's going to be a line. He's either going to really like this or not. There were like definitely it. some points where I was like questioning some of the decisions. Like at the very end, they had a similar moment that reminded me of like the ending of uh, the fucking like house made but even more weird and abrupt because it like pops up in the middle of this graphic ending and then it like resumes this is the guy going wasn't that a good movie yeah Yeah. and i'm just like enjoy the next program and then it just cuts back to the fucking so like this horrific just (laughs) trans woman coming out her eyes bleeding (laughs) yeah uh and it's just like oh okay and it it took me a while to put all the pieces together where I was like, oh, okay, this character is this character. Like, it took me probably, I don't know if I wasn't paying attention close enough. I didn't realize that uh, Eddie was Eddie for most of the movie. Oh! And, like, his mother was laughing at him. It wasn't until the end scene where I was like, oh, fuck! This is, like, the, the fucking Oedipus Rex thing. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, okay. So, um... Eddie's a trans woman. It's Eddie weird. Piss Rex. <laughs> it's weird. So recontextualizing this movie, people do refer to Eddie as like a trans woman, which would yeah, make I've sense. Heard the director say that he like considers Eddie trans feminine. So. Yeah. Um. So for the sake, and most of the time they use she her pronouns for Eddie, so that's what I'm going to be using mm-hmm. for this. But it's. It's really weird because this movie was made... Japan has a big history of homophobia and transphobia um, that's highlighted in this movie. Um, Guess what? So does uh, our country. So (laughs) there's um, a lot of them. Yeah. Uh, So this movie's like... This movie's fucking crazy that this came out, I feel. (laughs) Yeah, no. I was genuinely surprised that just... Not only the just how like progressive it is in some manners of what it was willing to show, but also just like how graphic it could be. <laughs> I was just like, oh fuck. Um, and I don't know if you uh, recognize the main character mm-hmm. Eddie. Um, it was played by Peter, uh, who is in Ron. Who who is uh, uh, Peter goes by he him. Bro. Oh, okay, <laughs> Peter. Uh, identifies as a male as far as I could my research went. Okay. Um, 
he likes to uh, skirt the boundaries, I guess. I guess he's he might be non-binary. There's not a lot of, like, research. I, uh, through my research, I couldn't figure out, like, I couldn't find a lot of interviews in English with him, so I'm like, this is annoying. But um, yeah. he plays the, like, uh, the person that's traveling with the old king. Oh, okay. Who's like, la, la, la. Fuck, I need to watch your phone. Yeah. I, like, even, oh, I just remember, like, these vivid images of, like, oh, this is so beautiful. Just remember the ghostly old man walking out of the fucking, oh, man. That so um, cool. But, yeah, so Eddie, she is, like, a young trans woman. Peter was 17 in this movie. Oh, whoa. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't ever, like, show yeah. intercourse, so I'm not as, but I was like, what the fuck? And I'm like, I feel like Peter looks pretty young in Ron. I'm like, and that was like 15 years after this. I wonder, and then I'm like, oh, born in 52. Wait a minute. This came out in 69. Um, uh, so if you know the story of Oedipus Rex, this is very similar to that. It's just swapping uh, mother and father roles mm. in Oedipus Rex. He kills his dad and then fucks his mom without knowing it. And uh, in this, Eddie, she kills her mother. And then long, a long time later, like years later, mm-hmm. uh, has sex with her father and her father finds a picture of them and he's like, oh, fuck, that's my kid and slashes his throat. And then she finds him dead and she doesn't want to live anymore as well. So she takes that same knife and gouges both her eye, like just stabs straight in. And that's fucking, that was for 69. That looked pretty good too, I would say. Yeah, no. I was like, oh, I was actually like, oh, what the fuck? I, I was concerned about the scenes where like the eyes are clearly just covered in like whatever they use for blood. And she's got this fucking knife and I'm just like, oh, hopefully the actor is like, Able to see what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's that's the main story, I guess. But this movie's very experimental in its approach. Uh, mm-hmm. And we don't see a lot of the story until, like, the middle chunk and then the ending chunk. Um, beforehand, it's more uh, an exploration of just, like, the gay and trans subcultures in Japan. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, like, half of this movie is just a documentary. Like, it jumps from being a narrative film to actually just being a documentary about, like, yeah. trans and gay people. I, f- I feel like a big part of this movie is, like, it's going for, like, identity. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it talks about, like, the the mask theory. I don't know, like, the proper term for it, but it's basically the idea that people wear masks. And uh, different masks for different people. And there's, like, sub-layers of masks and how complex or simple they can be. And I feel like uh, the documentary scenes were kind of like the movie changing its mask yeah. in a certain sense. Like, basically, like, acknowledging, like, yeah, we've been wearing a mask this whole time. Let's show you the layer beneath. And there'll they'll be scenes where there's a sex scene and then it'll just cut away mm-hmm. to being like, yeah, these sex scenes are completely artificial. So, where the, the other guy's just sitting on the bed like, no, no. It, it kind of reminds me of, like, the scenes from, like, Spaceballs <laughs> when they're fighting and it'll just cut to the camera crew. Um, and then there's also, there's, there, and then later on the documentary, because early on I'm just like, okay, this might be part of the narrative, but really it's just completely... Mm. Like separated because yeah. then there's documentary footage of Peter as Peter mm. talking about his character of Eddie, and he's like, "Yeah, she is. Uh, she's much, very lo- similar to me. She lost her father when she was young. I don't. Uh, those, I don't like, agree with the incest part, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, were those like real people that they were interviewing like earlier in the? That's film? that I don't know. Some of those like reactions like there's the one person who was like kind of like hiding half their face mm-hmm. when they were talking about it and that that just seemed like very genuine yeah. i was just kind of curious i wouldn't be surprised because it seemed like a lot of these the people that were in this movie mm-hmm. weren't necessarily professional actors so even if they were just like acting in the movie those might have just been genuine documentary like interviews as well yeah um which like this movie's really really cool because mm-hmm. of, like it has so many weird interspersed genres and like it's nonfiction and fiction all wrapped together. It's, I don't know. I haven't seen a movie like this before in yeah. a lot of ways. No, I really liked it. And then of course I'm a sucker for like 
black and white cinematography, especially when it gets into like the abstract regions. Yeah. And there's and I and I also love like the more kind of goofy avant garde stuff, uh, like the scene the, where they're yelling at each other and it's got yeah. Like a, I love we'll stuff down. like that. It's yeah. it's like really fun ex- ways to express yourself in a movie. It's just like that's fun. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, but also, movie is gorgeous. There's mm. there's some really like there's a shot where she's like running from the guy that was like teleporting oh, that was yeah. talking, and she goes down into like a basement, and she looks up at him, and he's like, uh, it's just like a silhouette against the just the sky mm. and then it cuts back to her and she's just like it's all darkness around her it just looks really cool and really nice and like i said the scene where the cinematography involving the knife the way that like the camera twists and turns around it and then like stabs the eye and then mm-hmm. the movie ends by doing that same kind of twist and turn and zooming into the knife i think was really cool just reminded me of the line from the guy from tangerine where he's like don't get it twisted don't get it twist. God. We'll talk about that one here shortly, though. Anyway. Um, yeah, no, this movie is fucking just really unique, really experimental, and but not in, like, a messy way. I feel like it toes the line enough where it's, like, balanced. Like, I don't think if someone is, like, let's say, like, someone who hates experimental films sat down to watch this movie. I feel like they might have an easier time with like this movie as opposed to if they were to sit down and watch something like Eraserhead because it's a, it's easier to digest in that movie and it only goes off on the abstract rails sometimes. And even then sometimes it it'll cut back like the the big like montage of like flashing scenes and like people screaming and stuff mm-hmm. like the probably one of the more uh longer in uh, the one of the more longer experimental scenes, it cuts to them like showing a film, and I was like, "Yeah, this was my experimental film." Oh, yeah. Like, and they're all sitting around, and, and then they, they have like a naked orgy later. Yeah, and they showed them like making the like thing earlier. Yeah, yeah. Um, Pierre watched this movie. With me. What did he? Think uh, of he Paris? said it wasn't the. W- Every time I put on a movie and Pierre's here, and it's a Criterion movie, he's like, "This is the worst streaming service of like, in existence." <laughs> um, he said it wasn't the worst Criterion movie he's watched. Oh, so wow. That's something. That's a huge compliment from him. And there are parts he liked. Uh, oh, that's good. Like, there's a part where uh, she's kind of being antagonized by these guys, and she walks around a corner, and the guy, like, has the ramen cart, and he, like, falls over, oh, and yeah. the ramen goes over, and then, like, starts cutting back and forth, and he laughs that part. Yeah. Um, I also, you know... That fucking music that they keep playing that, like, kind of sounds like an ice cream tune. Um, yeah. I, I like it. I, I like the... I wasn't sure of the, the first scene, and it, I had the volume up pretty high, because it was, like, in general, I was it was a pretty quiet movie beforehand, yeah. and then it started getting... I, f- I feel like a lot of kind of, like, darker, like, material movies from the 60s would use music like that. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like it's common that I'll, like... It's been a while since I've tried watching it, but I remember when I tried watching John Waters' like debut film. Mm. I, I think it had like a soundtrack kind of like that too, and it's just like hmm, interesting. I'm sure it was just probably like the cheapest way to make yeah. music at the time, and it like kind of creates for an eerie atmosphere in the right context. But. but I really like it because they keep using this track, and I feel like every time it's used, it becomes quieter or darker or more distorted. Mm-hmm. And as and in the beginning, because this movie is very non-linear in its approach of storytelling, like yeah. it cuts back and forth a lot. We'll see like same scenes like yeah. twice through different contexts, um, and then it'll cut way back into like. Uh, Eddie's, like, childhood where Mm. she kills her mother and her mother's lover. Um, But before that, most of it is a pretty jovial, like, movie. Like, she's just having fun. She's like, yeah, fuck you. I can do what I want. Mm. Um, Because there's also this, like, older trans woman named Lita, I think her name Mm -hmm. was. Uh, And there's also the approach of, like, how... Should, how out should you be in, like, this world? I feel like that's what these two characters are supposed to represent in a little bit. Yeah, like, uh, the, the Lita's a bit more 
not like conservative, but like old fashioned with yeah. like what she wears. And she's like, because a lot of the time they don't refer to them as like trans. They just refer to them as gay boys. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's weird because they'll refer to, to themselves as gay boys in like a sense that they're not even like saying that they're gay, that they're like a completely different thing. Like there's a difference between being a gay person and being a gay boy. So mm. it's, 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 it's interesting. There's a lot of interesting use of language in this. And like, there is a lot of transphobia in it, but it's never like coming from the movie. It's just like, feels like genuine reactions mm. to scenes. Um, But yeah, I like the dichotomy between those two. Sorry, I was lost in my thoughts. I'm like, where the what the fuck am I talking about? Yeah. Um, but in general, this movie, and I, I, I wish I kind of wish I had watched this yesterday, so I had a little more time to wrap yeah, my head this around. This is the last one. I, I watched it like finished it like right over. Oh, I, I finished it like two hours, three hours ago. Oh, okay. um, but man, I, this this is one of those movies that I'm gonna be thinking about for a while, and I'll I'll probably try to rewatch it because it's a pretty short watch too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like an hour and a half. Yeah. Uh, or no, it's it's hour forty five. Yeah. It, uh, fucking tangerines an hour and a half. half. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. No, this one this one was great. Really enjoyed it. Uh, there's a there's a few the Toshio Matsumoto didn't do a whole lot of like feature length, but he did I think like two others mm-hmm. that are like easier to find, like more easily foundable, findable. Oh, okay. So I'll probably try to watch those because mm-hmm. in general I've loved pretty much all the things I've watched from. Um, there's a couple things that are it's hard to even like describe them as like full move, like short films. Cause like there are things that I watched by David Lynch. that's just him like taking a picture, uh, right. a video of a staircase and Toshio Matsumoto does some very similar things, which I think they're good. Like exercises in artistic expression. I understand, but it's very hard to like watch them be like, yeah, watch the short film. Yeah, no, I, I totally get what you mean, because David Lynch would have been my instant response to that. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know how accurate this is, but Wikipedia at least reports that uh, quite a few people consider this, like, they there's very clear um, inspiration pulled from this for Kubrick's A Clockwork Orange yeah. that came out a few years, like, I think two years after this. Um, and I could see it. I don't know how accurate that is, but I could definitely see it. Yeah. Kubrick's like, I'm going to go watch a movie. And he's like, whoa. I put can, that down, write that down. Yeah, I could definitely see some, like, maybe similarities <laughs> for sure. But who knows? Not me. Not Stanley Kubrick anymore because he's his dead. His brain has been rotting for, like, what, 20 years now? Something like that. Or probably 25? No, it hasn't been that long. He died in the 2000s, Did I he? believe. I thought Eyes Wide Shut came out after he died. Was that oh, like 2002, yeah. 2001? I think it was like 2001. It's got to be at least 20 years. Yeah, it, it's pushed in 20 if it's not there. Let me see. Kubrick death. Kubrick's death was a... Oh, 1999. I was two. I did it. I, did. I think you're going to give this one... An eight. A nine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Powerful. Mm-hmm. You're going to give this one a ten. I am. Mm-hmm. I, this is exactly the type of fucking experimental shit I love. Yeah. I was like, yeah, fuck yeah. And I was really I was really worried because I'm like, I've seen so many of his short films, so I'm like, some of these things, these like aspects, what if I've seen them done better in like these short films or something? And mm-hmm. he tries to pull it off. But no, I loved it. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, now let's talk about the Baconator and his movie Tangerine. Um, you've seen the Florida Project, right? I've seen. The Did Florida you like that Project. one? I liked it. Okay. Yeah. I, I quite enjoyed fun. the Florida Project when I watched it. Uh, Willem Dafoe is fantastic in that movie. Oh yeah. Uh, the kid's really, really fucking good too. Mm-hmm. At least from what I remember. Um, so Tangerine is about two trans women. One's getting like just out of jail from like a month stint. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she uh, thinks she's being cheated on by her boyfriend, who's also like a pimp. So she just, and it's also Christmas Eve. <laughs> yeah. She's just walking around town the whole day trying to find like the woman that he's cheating on her with. 
Yeah. And the other woman is getting ready for her performance because she has a performance night. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much the entire movie. And it culminates in... Like, all of them getting together in a donut shop. Yeah, there's there's some plot threads, because there's also this plot thread with, uh, he's Armenian, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, an Armenian cab driver. Roz, Rozenik, I think his name was? Yeah. But, uh, he, yeah, he, he, he shows up partway through the film, and, yeah, he finds himself involved in the finale as well. Rozenik. Yeah. Uh, um... The only person I recognized in this movie was the guy who played um, Chester, mm. who was James Ransoni or Ransone. I don't know. Uh, he's in It Chapter 2, and he's also in the Sinister movies. Mm. So I recognized him from that. I'm like, yo, I know that guy. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Everyone else is... Uh, like, the, the two trans women, mostly from what I see is they, they don't really act in a lot of things. Um, mm. One of them... The one that played Cin- Cindy, mm-hmm. she's not in, like, anything. Oh, wow. This might have been her only thing she was in. Um, and, like, it definitely shows a lot of the acting's, like, really raw in this movie. Mm-hmm. And, like, maybe not refined. I, yeah, I think it works for the characters, because the characters are very raw, though. Yeah, no, definitely. And that's what this movie's going for. That's why, like, I think Sean Baker, Baconator, that's why Sean Baker, like, wanted to film on an iPhone. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of, like... Discussion because uh, who else did uh, Soderbergh? Yeah. He's done a few movies on an iPhone. He did High Flying Bird, I think it was called, about like an, a basketball player. I watched it. I, I remember liking it. Okay, I have. Yeah. I don't fucking remember anything about it. What was that one movie with the woman and her stalker? It was a Soderbergh movie. Oh, was that Unsane? Yeah, was that on an iPhone too? I remember yeah. that. Apparently, was. Pretty good. I didn't see it. it was, um, I, I enjoyed it enough. It, it was fine. It, I remember, like, working at the theater, that I, I remember hearing that that had, like, the biggest drop off in, like, a long time from first weekend to, like, second weekend. Oh, yeah. Like, sure. just nobody watched it the second weekend. Yeah, I, w- I wish cell phone movies were more. Uh, socially accepted, yeah. but because like they they work, I but I do think like there are some scenes in this that look genuinely awful. <laughs> oh yeah, the first scene I think looks is the worst looking scene in the movie. I don't know what it is. It might just be the lighting and the way they're it's framed, but the cuts in between them look bad. The lighting looks bad, and everything else. Looks bad, but it. I think it adds to the rawness of being like, this is the shitty part of California. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've yet, everything looks gross. I've yet to see a cell phone movie that looks like good, but they usually have pretty dark, depressing undertones. Yeah. It usually works. Yeah, mostly it fits with the tone. I just, I don't think that first scene looks good no, for I, the tone. I agree. I agree. But like the rest of the movie, I think looks competently shot like most of it look is competently shot like the cinematographer's mm-hmm. good they're definitely doing what it proves that you can make a good movie with this because in general i think this movie's good yeah. um i have some issues with it uh i think my biggest issue is although the acting's pretty raw i think between the two trans women like the the woman that played alexandra is substantially better than the <laughs> woman that played cindy and it's just like really noticeable in their scenes together at least for me like there just seemed to be a lot more passion uh or maybe experience from the woman that was playing alexandra i think both of them did like mm-hmm. pretty good but I-, I think it's more noticeable i don't care if someone's good or bad at acting i'll watch whatever but when there's like two actors and like there's a noticeable gap it can be distracting for me if that makes sense. I, I, I get what you mean. I, I personally didn't notice it, okay. but... Um, and, I don't know. Like, it's... I, I think it was an entertaining enough film, but I didn't, like, get a ton out of it, I guess. Mm. Like, I liked it. Uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I probably, like, would say I enjoy this movie on about the same level that I enjoy a, like, Safdie Brothers movie. I mean, clearly not quite the same, mm-hmm. but they're, they're both movies that I feel like focus on just, like, telling kind of an entertaining but chaotic story. Yeah, about maybe less than moral people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm not, Cindy 
she immediately just starts beating up this woman that she suspects is me. <laughs> she doesn't even know. She's just like, fuck. And that woman's not very nice either. She no. uses the N-word. She calls them the F-slur. She's not a good person. Not but you didn't know this when you saw her. You yeah. immediately just started beating the shit out of her and yeah. dragging her across town. <laughs> the one has the line where she's like, you know, I'm, I'm getting less sympathy for you as this goes on. <laughs> and it's like, yeah... And That's then I think they smoke, like, meth together they or something. They smoke crack. Oh, they smoke crack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. She, al- she almost misses her friend's performance because she's so busy just dragging this fucking lady to donut time because that's where the pimp is hanging out. He's yeah. like, this is where I do my day-to-day business. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then Rasmic is just, like, he's cheating on his wife because he really loves to suck off trans women. Yeah, and there's a, uh, there's line. a scene earlier on when he uh, picks up a woman with a vagina, thinking that she has a penis because that block is apparently frequented by trans women. Mm-hmm. And he's like, what? Where the fuck is it? Yeah, I thought that scene, while I thought it was disgusting, I also thought it was pretty funny. I laughed. I, I think I genuinely thought it was funny, simply because I think the actor who was playing Rosbick was really good at putting on a very confused yeah. face. Like, he looked like he just couldn't believe that he was just like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. Where's the pink? But they they include a line towards the end of the movie that make it... It, it seems to suggest something about his character that I don't know is necessarily true, but I find it to be interesting where the, the pimp throws out a line where he's like, oh, I see, you like cheating, like, you like sleeping with my bitches here because you don't feel like it's really cheating. And he he has, like, a line where he's like, well, it, I view it as, like, a business transaction. Yeah. There's no love there. I've, I've heard that from people before. Like, I, I, not necessarily in my life, but, like, online, I've seen that sentiment before. I'm like, I what? <laughs> I don't think that philosophy applies to like prostitution. Mm-hmm. I can see that philosophy like applying to like let's say you're in like an open relationship or something. Yeah, and it's like that. I I think it works there yeah. where it's like consensual between the people in the relationship. And but being like, no, uh, my it. dude, even if you're paying for sex, just because you're paying for it, that doesn't mean you're not having sexual relations with yeah. another person. It's like it doesn't work like that, but. Yeah, no. It's but, just, yeah, there's a lot of, like, not great people. And then Alexandra, throughout the whole movie, is kind of uh, toted as the more, like, moral one. And she's not necessarily, like, she, at least in comparison. And then she, it's revealed yeah. that she also uh, fucked Chester. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and she was just, like, playing off the blame by talking about the white woman. And he, he just also apparently just fucks up ton of people. And they're just all, like, bad people. <laughs> yeah. But they're, it's Christmas. <laughs> yeah. The movie ends with, basically, uh, the two getting into, like, this big fight over this, obviously, and you know, you expect, based off her reactions for the first uh, hour and ten minutes of this movie to be, like, to beat the shit out of her friend, but instead she's just like, oh, well, fine, I'm just done. I've I've ex- I've emotionally spent myself on this white bitch the whole day. I'm gonna leave, so she leaves and then uh, she's gonna go work the streets. But some guys decide to fucking throw urine in her face yeah. and call her the f word. So then her and her friend f word and the t word they yes. do a, they do a big double one. Yeah. So they fucking uh, have a moment where they just go and like get her cleaned up and she lets her wear her wig and yeah it's it's a nice kind of like show of solidarity yeah. i think in general i because this movie is really like mean-spirited at times um and it's funny at times but mm. i think it's good to end on a more hopeful note that it also kind of hints that I'm like, does this just happen every fucking week to them? Do they get into a fight like this? <laughs> because she immediately turns around. Or it's or it's just a more hopeful note of like, yeah, there will always be this solidarity between trans people because they're... I, that's not really hopeful. That's really fucking sad, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it's a good hint at that. And I, as I was reading about this, apparently, like, the two uh, trans women, the, the main characters, they had a decent uh, input on the script, which I'm okay. really grad, glad for because <laughs> I feel like 
I would be very uncomfortable if it was just like, yeah, Sean Baker wrote this all by himself. I'd be like, uh, yeah. Also, uh, because of like the mean spiritedness of some scenes and stuff, I'd be a little worried. Mm-hmm. Um, and I forgot until I started watching this, but this was a uh, produced by the Duplass brothers. Yeah, I noticed that at the beginning. I was like, no, oh, I know those guys. <laughs> I love those guys. But no, I I think earlier on when I was saying like I like this, I, I do I really enjoyed this movie. I, I but I think in in comparison. Not as powerful, not not as epic, but I think it's a good movie. I can see Sean Baker has, like, good directing ability, definitely. Mm-hmm. And I think it's something to be said, like, to make a movie this competent and this, like, powerful with an iPhone. <laughs> yeah. No, definitely. And I, I remember when this movie was coming out, movies coming out like this, I kind of, in my head, I immediately went, oh, they're just trying to be, like, gimmicky. But I think this is actually, like, a really good thing to do because it's, uh, I think it can be really, like, inspiring for people to be like, yes, you can do this. Because mm-hmm. the world's, you know, a shitty place. and But you can at least film that and make a movie of it. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to see, like, an equivalent to, like, a modern day, like, just new wave of, like, cell phone movies of just, like, non-experienced filmmakers mm-hmm. making Dude, movies also. like that. Like, detox. We filmed that on a cell phone. We filmed that on a motherfucking... It looks like it. <laughs> yeah, it does. It really does. We also improvised most of the script <laughs> while we were shooting it. Well, yeah. But, I mean, that's that's what it was. That's, that's, that's good. That's the energy that that film contains. Yeah. It needed it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, yeah. In je- this is good, 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 good last four movies, actually. I've enjoyed all the... The last week I enjoyed all those movies. Mm-hmm. Desert Hearts I really enjoyed. Carol was good. Yeah, I wish we could continue this gay parade, but instead we're going somewhere else yeah. next week. But uh, I think you're going to give this movie a seven? Mm-hmm. I think that you're going to give this movie a seven. Yep. All right. Yeah, sorry. All right, so yes, uh, next week we'll hit... A hundred episodes. Episode one hundo. We've been doing the podcast for just about two years now. Mm-hmm. Because I think we've skipped a couple weeks here and there. So probably just about two years then. It's been a wild ride. But hun- episode 100 will be our last step. Ep- no. <laughs> uh, so next week, we're going to watch some really stupid movies. Just because sometimes, sometimes it's easier just to talk about stupid that, movies too. And one of them, we... Did a joke about a lot on the first episode, so we thought we'd bring it full circle. Did we watch it? Did we say that on the first episode? The first episode was the Wild Hogs episode. Spoiler alert for one of the movies we're going to be watching. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, Wild Hogs, and then we're watching Old Dogs. <laughs> wild Hogs and Old Dogs. Is there any movies about gay frogs or something? <laughs> the Alex Jones movie. The fluoride, turning the frogs here. Dude, watch. The, like, 20 years from now, there's going to be some just, like, very low success movie that's going to come through. It's going to be a biopic on Alex Jones. And it's going to, like, try to prop You up. can play Alex Jones. <sighs> Whoa, you see? No, I can't. I don't it's know. It's going to be really red. <laughs> I, I could probably do it if I wanted to. But I don't know if I want to. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, so what was that? Dir- we watched a movie director not too long ago where we. St- st- it was. Uh, no, it was fucking. What was that movie? The one with Keanu Reeves that's based on the Philip K. Dick novel. Oh, oh, um, that was Richard Linklater. But Richard it was, Linklater, um, yes. Oh, um, uh, a scanner darkly. A scanner darkly. I was gonna say, like I, I remembered having a flash of him being in something genuinely good for a second, and I it threw me off. But <laughs> Keanu Reeves has been in good movies. I wasn't talking about Keanu Reeves. I was talking. Oh about yeah, Alex Jones. Jones is a man. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. No, I like Keanu Reeves. Uh. But yeah. Wild hogs and old dogs. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be episode right. one hundred. Yeah, and then we'll probably just continue. I, I, I was thinking like maybe we'll restructure up our hunter, but since fifty, I feel like I've been pretty satisfied with the structure we have right now. So yeah, it works. Probably think keep doing that. I keep meaning to 
make more stuff for the channel, but I just... Yeah, I've got some scripts that if I just tweak them around a little bit, I can... Because I was doing... I went through and I was going to do like a Muppet ranking video for all the Muppet movies, but I think instead I'm going to do like just release some individual reviews because I've got like some of them typed up and I can stretch it out into more content. There we go. I'm going to be making a comic review for, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's called spider shadow it's uh what if spider-man storyline that's going on right now it has two more issues so once that comes out i'll probably do a comic review for that i've got uh and i've been thinking about just doing book reviews for all the books we've covered on read mm -hmm. just as like or even some of them i've been thinking about just doing reviews for movies we've covered if yeah people, i've considered like, that too like little just like two minute videos that are spoiler free where it's like, yo, you probably don't watch the episode where we talked about this. I'm going to try to give you the selling points. Like I've thought about doing that with like green fish and. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I, if I did that, I would only want to do it on movies that I want people to like watch. So like mm -hmm. probably movies that are more underknown, like green fish mm -hmm. or like a uh, funeral parade of roses. Mm -hmm. Man, I can't wait to talk. That's the movie I'm talking about today. Cause I haven't put my, queer post up, queer cinema oh, post yeah. up on Facebook today, so that's the one I'm talking about today. I just didn't want to give away from me going, this movie's fucking epic, bro! Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Episode 100, we did it! We did it, baby! <laughs> Next week, well, unless we'll we have did it. Unless the studio explodes. I'd, I'd hope not. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. <laughs>